What is going on traders? We just wrapped up a massive data drop week in the markets. Wednesday was FOMC, Thursday three of the top five companies in the world reported earnings. And Friday we had a jobs report, a significant jobs report that came in super hot and is completely spooking the market. I'm going to go over some data showcasing why the jobs report is spooking the market, but the Fed fund futures are now projecting that the Fed is going to raise rates above 5%. We are also seeing the yield curves steepening once again, signaling a potential recession. There was a ton of short covering last week, a lot of euphoria, FOMO buying, which unfortunately, in my opinion, some of those FOMO buys are gonna get crushed. And I'm gonna be telling you why I sold some stocks today, stocks that I bought last October and later. I'll go over which stocks I'm looking to sell. And then of course, we're going to be doing a little technical analysis of the market so that I keep you up to date on what levels I'm looking at. I was expecting the S&P 500 to hit around 4,300 if the FOMC meeting was seen as dovish and it was, and we'll go over why that is, even though I, I went live on FOMC and I gave you guys a market update, but we will be talking about why the FOMC was dovish, why the market did rally. The market did hit 4,200, a little less than the 4,300 that I expected on dovish comments. And what would make this inverse head and shoulders, one of the most reliable patterns that we have in the stock market, what would make this a fake out? Let's get right into it. As you can see, I'm not in the studio. I'm in beautiful Oaxaca, Mexico. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram for daily free trading and finance content, as well as a few updates on the travels. If you guys are interested, follow me. The links are in the description below. So really starting the year, the market has seen a nice rally. We hit that long trend line that we've been monitoring since last January of 2022. And then we poked above it significantly. We did create an inverse head and shoulders and we broke above the neckline. This is one of the most reliable patterns in the stock market. Keep in mind that we have CPI data coming out February 14th. And if CPI comes in higher than expected, expect the market to get spooked once again. The market is already getting spooked. I'm going to get back to the charts, but let's talk about why the market is getting spooked. It's because of the jobs report that came out on Friday that was completely out of the range of estimates. The market expected 187,000 jobs to be added. The market added 517,000 new jobs, fueling new speculation that we could be seeing wage inflation hit once again. And also if the Fed is trying to curb spending, hiring four times the, the number of jobs expected or three times the number of jobs expected is not going to really curb spending. And the Fed was hoping that companies would actually be deterred from such a massive hiring effort. So now if we look at the 10 year, two year spread, we can see that the spread is steepening once again. There was a little bit of hope that the yield curve was flattening, meaning getting back to zero or getting back to normal, where the 10 year actually pays more than the two year. But the two year completely spiked today because of the jobs report that came out on Friday. Also, I tweeted this out, but if you look at the Fed funds futures, which is basically the way that institutions bet on what the Fed funds rate is going to be, the Fed funds rate is projected in May to be 5%. And if you look at June, July, August, and September, it's expected to go above 5%. Now this initially, if you remember the Fed funds futures market, as well as the bond market, just was not, they were not buying what Jerome Powell was selling. So even though the Fed members have come out consistently and said that most of the Fed members see the Fed fund futures being above 5% at some point this year, the bond market and the Fed funds futures market were both projecting that the Fed would not get to 5%. But now we are seeing that for May through September, at least, they are projecting the rate to be above 5%. So this was definitely a direct cause of the jobs report that came out on Friday. Also, you can see that the two year yield has surged 4% today to hit almost 4.5% on the yield, rising at a much higher pace than the 10 year yield thereby steepening that, that yield curve, which is one of the signals of a recession, of an upcoming recession. Now, if you've been following my last videos, I was saying that on FOMC, if it is a dovish FOMC, then we could pop to 4,300. Now, we did pop to 4,200, not 4,300. That's not really important. However, the FOMC was dovish, which did fuel a mini rally 
also fueled by a lot of short covering because there was a record number of shorts in the market in the form of puts as well as outright shorts. But Jerome Powell basically came out and said that they are not even looking at financial conditions and that the financial conditions were tight, even though everything was pointing to the financial conditions being rather loose, looser than it was even before the Fed started raising rates. Now, as I said at the outset of the video, the inverse head and shoulders, as well as the head and shoulders, both of those patterns are two of the most reliable, as a matter of fact, depending on what stat you look at and what index or stock you track, they are the most reliable patterns. If you're just looking at the patterns themselves in isolation, the most reliable patterns that we have in the stock market and in stock charting. So the fact that we created an inverse head and shoulders broke above the neckline, as you see here, this is uh, this has an over 80% chance to signal a reversal of this long downtrend. However, this is a big caveat because this will coincide with the next CPI data drop. If CPI comes in higher than expected, we already have jitters from the hotter than expected job market. So if CPI comes in hotter than expected and we drop below the neckline, when the neckline is breached and then it and then the price action falls back below the neckline in this case in an inverse head and shoulders then that is a strong signal that the inverse head and shoulders is actually a weak candidate and we could see a failure of this pattern so all eyes will be on february 14th on the cpi if it comes in hotter than expected then you can expect this rally here in my view to be over otherwise if inflation comes in lower than expected and we all oh, we have a strong jobs market that is going to then once again fuel the the soft landing narrative the fact that the economy doesn't have to tank for inflation to drop and i could see us then heading back to that 4,300 level. I know that a lot of people just want a clean, are we going up or going down stance, but this is not the channel for that. I will always give you a conditional case because that is how I trade, that is how I invest. Now, if you want that, maybe there are other channels that can provide that, but not this one, and I apologize. So in this case, why did I sell some stocks? Well, I was looking at stocks that I had accumulated in October and later, uh, Soxo being one of them, Sox as well, which is the non-leveraged version of this. This is the semiconductor ETF. I did end up selling my Sox L as well as my SOXX here. Also, Apple reported the slowest quarter growth in six years. Their guidance was not Apple-like for sure. And they also missed earnings, which I don't even remember the last time Apple actually missed earnings and by a wide margin. So Apple hitting that almost 160 price point after earnings was definitely a lot of short covering and euphoria and FOMO buying and funds looking to add positions and put cash to, to work because a lot of funds have been sitting on the sidelines and they're going to have a lot of disappointed clients. So in my view, I think I'm comfortable selling Apple, at least the Apple that, that I bought in October and later, I'm comfortable selling Apple here near the 155, 160 range. And I also offloaded some Tesla here at around 195. So Tesla, I've been accumulating for a very long time, but I did recently buy some Tesla when it hit below 120. And I'm comfortable offloading those shares at almost a between 70 and 90% profit taking. I also offloaded Nvidia above 210. Again, this these aren't my entire holdings. These are shares that I accumulated in October and later. I'm looking to secure some profits here. Yes, I know there's a tax implication. Yes, I know that I could sell covered calls, but if the stock market drops, uh, you know, th this is basically how to manage risk, right? In in the face of all of these binary events that seem more important than ever as each binary event passes. So in this case, we have CPI on February 14th. So, you know, with a hot jobs report, I don't want to take the risk uh, holding a lot of these stocks with a hot jobs report and a potentially uh, expected or higher than expected inflation rate. And the additional tax in terms of short-term capital gains versus long-term capital gains, I'm willing to pay that in order to not sustain a much more disproportionate drop. So if I'm paying 15% more uh, in tax, for instance, because of short-term capital gains versus long-term capital gains, what if the stock that I'm holding drops by more than that? Especially when we're talking about a leveraged ETF like Sox L, right? If Sox L drops by 50%, I'm going to wish that I sold and uh, you know paid more in tax, paid 15% more in tax 
then hold it and sustain a 50, 60% drop. So, you know, it is very surgical here and, and I'm okay with these decisions. Nobody ever went broke taking profit. Anyway, traders, short little video for you here. Hope you got something out of it. If you did, hit that thumbs up. Leave it in the comment section below. Let me know whether you think this, this rally is short-lived or if October was the bottom. I'm really interested in hearing your guys' perspective. If you want access to all of my trades, my analysis, what we're buying, what we're selling, etc. Link is in the description below, link for the Academy. In my view, the greatest Academy online. You also get access to over 60 videos of courses and you get access to the Mastermind Zoom calls with me. So check it out, link is in the description below. Stay safe out there traders, peace.